Okay, so uh, we're into the bye week with the Vikings. Um, you know, everything is awful. Everything is bleak. I'm so depressed. Um, um, and, it, you know, Viking fans are all miserable and they're mad and they want to do something. And I guess one of the, the hot topics is obviously Kirk Cousins and... Um, people want him released. They want to, you know, not even, you know, don't try to trade him. Don't keep, you know, just, you know, ride it out. Don't, you know, keep him around. Maybe even to be like a a mentor quarterback next year if they draft somebody. No, it's just release him right now. And. That's stupid. It just is very, very stupid. The financial hit alone would be huge. And if, 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 if at any point Kirk Cousins is released, there's going to be a lot of just dead cap money sitting there. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's like... Um, I think if he's still on the roster in like mid-March, you know, the first day of the league year or whatever they call it um you know and then his contract is like guaranteed for the for, I think for the two years um but if they get out of it before then if they choose to um you know there's going to be a lot of dead cap money but it's less I mean are we going to talk about this for the next six months you know I guess not six months, but like, I mean, there's not a chance in hell that that they're cutting Kirk Cousins in the middle of the season. It's just ridiculous. Like, just the financials alone make no sense to do it. Like, even if you wanted to, like, like if you wanted to just bench him, I mean, you know, it would have been valid. To bench him yesterday, I don't think you know you could you could have done it like that would have been like the first time maybe really in his entire entire time here that you know you could have benched him and probably had a strong case for it. I mean he's had other bad games, but you know I mean he was he was the a number one problem yesterday. Um. It's like, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna bench him out. Like, that, the benching, you, you know, you have a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, and not whether it's just the money he gets paid or his or his stature or whatever. You really only get to play that card once with benching him, because once you bench a guy like that, it's kind of over. And a lot of people say, well, it it's over. The Cousins experiment is over. And a, and a failure. I don't agree that it's a failure at all. I mean, I look, it's probably not going to get him to Super Bowl because he's probably not going to be here for beyond maybe 2021. Um, and fuck, we could relitigate the signing for to the end of time. It was the right thing. It was the right move. You, you, you want it, you know. I saw someone yesterday, yesterday or today, pissed that. Something talking about, oh, we let all these quarterbacks like Sam Bradford didn't even make it half a season after that. Like, it's, you didn't let three great quarterbacks go, you let one quarterback go who right now looks like he might be someone you'd really want. Like, Teddy looks pretty solid with Carolina, but he's not, he's not like amazing, but he's, he's solid. And I'm, I, I will always root for Teddy, so I'm glad he is, but. You know, it was the right move at the time, and you know you can argue. You, if you want to argue the extension being a bad move, you could probably make that argument because you know if they never make the extension and they needed the cap, they needed cap relief. I mean, they, you know, it's always hard to say which moves specifically 
were made because of another move, but and you can say, well, we're one and five, so who gives a shit what moves were made? But you know, you know it was it was it was a good move, I think, to, to free up some cap space, and maybe you end up with then dead cap space later, so maybe it kind of evens out. But um, you know, if you let him, if you just so you didn't need the cap relief and you just let him play it out and this was year three and this was the last year of the contract I think at this point it probably would be like a no brainer that this is just the end for Cousins here I mean if, if nothing else just because the fucking fans hate him I mean he is so hated in this town I mean I've, I've never seen anything quite like this you know like Maurer was hated because of the money but like you know People got people got on Joe Maurer, but they never got on him to this extent. I mean, like there's really some personal shit being said about about cousins, about you know, just you want to attack a guy as a as an as a football player and his production, his value, fine. But like, don't, why do you, why do these people always got to go after like a guy's character? Like, talk about how he just doesn't give a shit. And he's just cashing paychecks. And, he doesn't give a shit what's going on with the team as long as he gets paid every week. Just fuck off. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna cut the guy, and you're not gonna bench him because people are fucking delusional if they think Sean Mannion is some savior. So I mean, you know, I could certainly listen to the argument that the Vikings should have invested more, maybe over the last couple of years, in a backup quarterback just because a backup quarterback can be really important that as we saw in 2017 um, because Sean Mannion is nothing he's nothing these couple of other young guys they got Nate Stanley and Jake Brown they're nothing I mean they're not they, we know they're nothing they're just guys sitting there filling out a roster basically um Maybe if we'd had preseason games this year, you know, maybe one of those guys would be the, the new Kyle Slaughter. And everyone would be convinced that they're, you know, the next superstar quarterback. You know, what, what, what's the last uh, touchdown pass Kyle Slaughter threw? <laughs> like, nobody even wanted him on a practice squad. Um... So you can make you can certainly make the argument that they should have made a more of an investment in a backup quarterback. Although, you know, when you don't have a ton of cap space, that's probably a spot you're not going to invest a lot of money in. And Cousins, whatever else you want to say, Cousins doesn't get hurt. You know, I mean, and he's been bludgeoned by behind some bad offensive lines in his time here, and he hasn't been hurt. So, you know, so you know he's going to be there. Now, some people will say that's a bad thing that he's there. Because, you know, a lot of these same people would probably be thrilled if he tore his knee up or something because they look for injuries because they're bad people. But, uh, so, kind of a ramble, but, you know, just we're not going to cut Kirk Cousins. And maybe in March we will. Like, but it's like, that's a lot of money to spend on essentially nothing. And I don't say, oh, Kirk, Kirk Cousins is terrible right now. He's nothing right now. Well, if nothing else, he's, you know, a capable quarterback most of the time. And I know he was fucking terrible against the Falcons. And he's had way too many turnovers this year. And maybe, maybe this is just going to be the new Kirk Cousins. He's just going to be a turnover guy, but... Um, this hasn't been his career and you know his career high I think it's uh, 13 interceptions well he's already closing in on that you know 13 interceptions for a year is not that bad I mean obviously like you know your, your top of the line quarterbacks maybe throw five in a year but um, you know he's, he's if, if, nothing else you, you know, he's a guy you can 
rely on it most of the time. Not yesterday. That I will never defend Kirk Cousins' performance against the Falcons. Never. But most of the time, he's not that quarterback. He's a better quarterback than that. Um, but, of course, recency bias is the only thing that matters. And whatever guy was in his last game is all he ever has been or will be. And that's just how some people will see the, see the world. Um, you know, and I don't know, like, like if they maybe will move on. I don't know. Maybe they'll be willing to eat that all that money uh, in March and cut him. But if you don't, well, then you keep him around. And he's a you maybe can have a bounce back, or he can just be the kind of the the uh, placeholder guy for some rookie that they drafted. And I know people will say, "Ooh, that's." You spend that much money on a placeholder? Well, if you're going to be paying, spending that money on it for nothing, like you might as well at least keep them around for that. And, you know, it's hard to, it's hard at the moment to defend Kirk Cousins in any capacity, but, you know, again, I never saw him for anything other than what he is, which is most of the time a pretty good quarterback who at his best is, is top 10 ish. And we've seen that. And we ain't seen it this year, and we may never see it again, but that's what he was. So, you know, I'd make, you know, the signing in, uh, in 2018 offseason, I'd, I'd make that signing every single time. Because what's, what's your other option? What, may, what, what do I got to do? Draft Lamar Jackson? Maybe they don't draft Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Maybe Lamar Jackson's only good because he went to Baltimore. Yeah. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but people never want to admit that that's how they're looking at things. So, so. but I mean, give me a break. It's like that's a zero point zero 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 one percent chance that Kirk Cousins is going to be released mid season this year. It's just not going to happen. He'd have to. He'd have to. You know being subordinate or something to to do that um so it's like just stop with the knee jerk stuff he's not going to get cut maybe you're going to just be pissed for the next uh, 10 games that he's going to be the quarterback but you know barring injury but like he's going to be here for the rest of the year and maybe he gets better maybe he gets worse maybe he just stays the same and just has a bad year and they decide to move on. Maybe they don't move on. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, all the um, the financials of the NFL are going to be kind of interesting next off season anyway. If the salary caps are are down where they're said to be, and you know, if this fucking virus is still doing what it's doing, that's going to affect things because then they might be staring at a second season with no fans. Um, but, you know, like the Wolves aren't, the, the Wolves didn't become billionaires by making ridiculous financial decisions like, you know, you know, and this would, and this would be, a, this would not be something where it would be like, oh, Spielman's just going to go do this. No, this, this would be like, this is going to be like when Brad Childress, um, released Randy Moss and just didn't tell the owners and <laughs> then he got fired for it. Like, you got to clear this shit with the owners, and I don't think they're going to want to do that, even if Spielman and Zimmer wanted it uh, wanted it done. But uh, so, and look, no one's going to like hearing this, but Kirk Cousins has been good more often than not with the Vikings, and you know it was a good signing. You may. You know, time will tell if the extension proves to really be a bad move. I mean, obviously, right now it looks like a bad move, but we'll see. But uh, you know, I've rambled long enough. But you know, Kirk's here for the year, so get used to it.